Model Y Long Range or Model Y Performance? That's a question that has crossed your mind if you're in the market for a Model Y. On the left is a 2022 Tesla Model Y Performance, and on the right is a 2021 Tesla Model Y Long Range. The Model Y was first delivered to owners in early 2020 and was Tesla's second mass market vehicle after the Model 3. The Model Y effectively expanded Tesla's product line to include a new body style. The Tesla Model Y has rapidly become Tesla's best-selling vehicle despite being more expensive than the Model 3. This speaks to the prominence of the Model Y dominating the widely popular crossover SUV sector. So if you're looking to purchase a Model Y, you face the tough decision to weigh the pros and cons of the long range and performance Model Y. And you've certainly asked the essential questions like, is the Model Y performance better than the long range? Or is there a substantial difference between the two? And probably most importantly, is the performance worth it over the long range? After having owned both vehicles, I can address these questions for you and help you decide between the two. So in this video, I'll be doing a head-to-head -head comparison of the Tesla Model Y Long Range and the Tesla Model Y Performance. Before we dive in, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post the latest and best Tesla-related content and I don't want you to miss out on a video. I'm going to start with the initial visible differences between the two. The Performance comes standard with these 21-inch Uber Turbine wheels. The Long Range comes standard with these 19-inch Gemini wheels. The performance also has upgraded performance brakes. They come painted red from the factory, whereas the long range brakes do not. The performance's suspension also sits about an inch lower to the ground. This does help with the handling a bit and makes it a tad bit sportier. It also comes standard with a carbon fiber spoiler. These are the initial visible differences you see between the long range and the performance. Will the average person out on the road notice these visible differences? Probably not. Some other things that are not visible unless if you quite literally test them out with a special device like a draggy performance meter are the 0 to 60 times and top speed. The performance clocks in a 0 to 60 time of an insanely quick 3.5 seconds and a long range at 4.8 seconds. I do notice a difference between the two when I'm driving. Also the performance's motors are different and upgraded than the long ranges. The performance is zippy and quicker off the line and the power gets delivered quicker. The top speed of the performance is 155 miles per hour, whereas the long range is 135 miles per hour. I think the top end speed increase is the most useless upgrade for 99% of people out there because of obvious reasons. The price tag of the long range and performance is also different. Tesla has slowly been increasing the prices of each since last year. Right now, the current starting price of the long range is $65,990 and the performance is $69,990. For some, it's a no-brainer to pay that little extra difference and get the performance. While on the other hand, some others may value more range and that's where the long range is the best option for you. Now moving on to the initial visible similarities. They're the exact same other than what I just pointed out of what the performance has and also a couple of other things. Both the same size, same length, same width, except for the height where the performance is an inch lower. The interior cabin is the exact same and so is the cargo space in the back. And surprise, surprise, the frunk is the exact same between the two as well. A similarity that is not necessarily visible is a battery pack. Same battery pack of 82 kilowatt hours, though I only believe 75 kilowatts are usable. So other than the similarities I outlined here, you're pretty much getting the same car. Just that the performance has more horsepower, more torque, quicker 0-60 to 60 time, and a higher top speed. With the long range having 330 miles on a full charge, that is where it takes the lead on the performance, where the performance only gets 303 miles on a full charge. As I've mentioned in my previous videos, the total range numbers don't really matter. And the reason is because for the most part, you're just commuting to and from work or school and you simply plug in your Tesla at the end of every day when you're done. You essentially wake up to the charge limit that you set it at and you're good to go for the next day. No range anxiety or anything like that. I personally have never experienced range anxiety in either of my Teslas because I plug in at the end of each day. And for times when you're going out on a road trip, Tesla's extensive supercharging network has you covered. With over 35,000 superchargers, range anxiety will be the least of your concerns. Especially since you can get up to 200 miles in under 15 minutes of supercharging. Now let's talk about the driving experience of the long range Model Y. Because the Tesla Model Y is based on the Tesla Model 3, it shares many of its driving characteristics with the Model 3. This means instant responses when accelerating. The 0-60 to 60 time in 4.8 seconds for the long range and 3.5 seconds for the performance would be seen as sports car statistics before Tesla made this part of everyday life with an EV. 
and strong performance is on offer at all times, delivered with near silence in refinement. There's also lots of grip thanks to the dual motors delivering all-wheel drive. The Model Y is enjoyable to drive enthusiastically. The driving experience of the Model Y is very smooth and comfortable. Obviously being an EV and having no gears to go through, it just glides up to a fast speed effortlessly. Since my long range Model Y has a 19 inch Gemini wheels, the driving experience and ride quality is optimal for everyday driving and just simply being a fantastic daily driver. I'm comfortable on long drives and road trips in it, especially with the super comfortable seats as a cherry on top. I'm not sure why people claim the Model Y is uncomfortable. Are they driving Rolls Royces every day? For me personally, the Model Y's driving experience is excellent and the best in its class. The driving experience of the performance is very similar. Not the same, but similar. With the performance coming standard with 21 inch wheels, by default, the driving experience is a tad bit sportier. Especially with the performance's suspension having a sporty tune. Generally, as a rule of thumb, avoid bigger wheels if you want a smoother ride. Bigger wheels result in a rougher ride. Switching to a smaller wheel and a thicker tire can give you a smoother ride without any major modifications to your car. But after driving both the long range with the 19 inch wheels and the performance with the 21 inch wheels, it's not exactly cut and dry like that. The performance Model Y is by no means an uncomfortable car at all. Even with the larger wheels and lower profile tires, the driving experience of the Model Y performance is still very smooth and comfortable. When I drive the performance right after driving the long range, I do notice that the ride is a tad bit firmer. Also driving the performance right after driving the long range on the same exact road, I do feel some more road imperfections making their way into the cabin. The performance feels more connected to the road, but if I only had the performance, I don't think I would notice this specific difference. There are people out there that swap their 21 inch wheels for the 19 inch wheels, but I don't really see the added benefit for a marginal increase in comfort. You're paying for a performance upgrade and part of that is a sportier experience you get. It's like getting an AMG or an M car and saying you don't like the sportiness of the drive. Like what? You're paying extra for the performance and all that. Anyways, I recommend the Performance Model Y for anyone considering that between the long range Model Y if you have a need for speed and you've narrowed down your choices to the Model Y. Moving on to the handling of the long range. To simply put it, it's very, very good. With the battery in the floor, handling is seamless. A low center of gravity will provide better handling. The Model Y has minimal roll when cornering, despite a higher body than that of the Model 3 and it being an SUV. The low center of gravity benefits the handling by reducing the weight transfer during cornering and braking, and it also reduces the propensity to roll over. The suspension and ultra quick two turns lock to lock steering make this big, heavy car feel remarkably agile. When you power out of corners hard, you feel 100% in control. The stability systems in general are conservative but well tuned and won't freak out when you lift off mid corner, which isn't always the case on heavy, tall SUVs. It's easy to see how someone with little experience of driving performance cars could drive a Model Y and be blown by the prodigious performance, high level of grip, and keen responses. Now to the handling experience of the performance Model Y. In the spirited comparison between the two cars, the handling and acceleration of the Model Y performance seems to stick out as a difference. Everything I said about the long range applies and then some. Equipped with a 21 inch uber turbine wheels, performance brakes, and the lowered suspension, the Model Y performance is ideal for someone who wants a quicker and more intense driving experience. Navigating through sharp turns, the performance seems to maneuver with more confidence and more ease. It tends to hug the road smoothly and handle the turns with exceptional quality. For a 5 seater 4500 pound plus car, the performance Model Y feels very lightweight when throwing it around corners and pushing its limits. You do not feel the heaviness one bit and it is truly a very fun vehicle to drive. You don't have any compromises that you would traditionally have with a sports car. Moving on to the pros and cons of the long range. The biggest pro of the long range is simply the extra range. At 330 miles on a full charge, the long range is the best if you need every little bit of that range. The 0-60 to 60 time of 4.8 seconds for the long range Model Y is still very impressive. The instant torque EVs have is just insane. EVs generate torque instantly without any or very small losses compared to gas powered vehicles. Simply because the wheels are directly coupled to the motor and that there is no traditional transmission. The small difference in ride quality is another reason to get the long range. The 19 inch tires that come with the long range also last longer than the 21 inch tires simply because the 19s are thicker. 
The 19s are Continental tires and have a treadwear rating of 400. The Pirellis that are on my Performance Model Y have a treadwear rating of 280. So tire longevity is another thing that the long range has an edge over the performance. It also depends on how you drive. If you have a lead foot and floor it everywhere you go, you will still inevitably eat away the tires quicker, no matter how much more tread wear you have. I wouldn't necessarily call this next one a con, but when comparing it head to head with the performance, the 0-60 time of the long range is 1.3 seconds slower, and also the top speed is 20 miles slower. Next, we have the pros and cons of the performance. Speed, quickness, and sportiness are all pros of the performance. With the suspension being tuned for a sporty driving experience, the result is a decidedly un-SUV-like feel from behind the wheel. The Model Y offers a sports car-like feel with quick steering responses and crisp reflexes. The electric powertrain provides instant throttle responses and quick acceleration. Where the performance falls short of the long range is the range it gets on a full charge, and that's 303 miles. Although the range is only 27 miles less than the long range, it is still more than what most people need. It's enough to get you from A to B the vast majority of time without stopping. And if you're on a trip, it's enough where you only really need to stop, which is at a supercharger, when you should be stopping anyways for food or for stretching. As a side note, trip planning accuracy is very good. Slightly conservative when it comes to charging stops, which is good for beginners, but if you tell the car where you're going, you will arrive with a percentage that it told you you would. The pros and cons of both are simple. Let's start with the storage space. It is a huge pro. With three separate storage areas, the Model Y offers more than enough room for stowing cargo. There is a generously sized main rear cargo area that's accessed by the rear liftgate, which can be further enlarged by lowering the folding rear seats. A concealed compartment under the cargo provides additional secure storage. You also get the front trunk, which is where the engine would reside in a conventional SUV. It all adds up to more than ample storage area, especially for the size of the Model Y. I made an in-depth video of the top 10 reasons to buy a Model Y, and you can check out that video by clicking the link in the description. But just to quickly name out a few, they are autopilot, supercharging, the Tesla app, safety, one pedal driving, and many more. Towing is also a unique one. Beyond its appeal as an extremely capable electric vehicle, the Model Y is ready and able to perform the duties of any family SUV. With a towing capacity of up to 3,500 pounds, the Model Y can pull at least as much as many conventional small SUVs and more than the competing electric models. An optional tow package includes a tow bar with a 2-inch hitch receiver along with the necessary wiring and tow mode. And of course, probably the most important pro is the maintenance, or lack thereof. I talked about my maintenance costs in my one year review of the long range Model Y and I'll link that video below in the description for you to check out. A minor con of the Model Y is the rear visibility. The sloping roof combined with a small rear view mirror make it challenging to see out of the Model Y when backing up. Although the rear camera system on the large center display helps. The cameras can be left on while driving forward so that's a plus. Another con is price changes. The long range Model Y has seen a $16,000 price increase since last year, but car prices have been increasing a lot across the board. Head over to your local auto dealership and you'll see this thing called a dealer markup or market adjustment. These added prices can range anywhere from $5,000 to $50,000 and potentially even more. Both the long range and performance Model Y are excellent vehicles. Neither are by no means bad or incompetent vehicles. When comparing just the long range and the performance head to head in a vacuum, yeah, it can get a bit nitpicky. But the long range and performance Model Y are years ahead of the closest competition and you cannot go wrong with either one. If I had to go back in time and choose between the long range and performance Model Y, I would choose the performance. I just enjoy the extra zippiness and sportiness the performance offers. If you enjoyed this video of the long range Model Y compared to the performance Model Y, please be sure to drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and turn on post notifications to stay updated on more videos to come. Comment what other videos you want to see between the long range and performance Model Y. As always, thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.